Hi, Madeline from Sonic Bloom here. After my last tutorial, which I'm going to link above, I got a lot of questions that basically came down to how does the file structure work? How can you upgrade and downgrade life without any issues or even your OS? And so I thought I'll just make a tutorial video covering all of these topics. So let's start with the file structure. When you install Ableton Live, it usually is installed either in your program folder if you're on Windows or your applications folder on Mac and this installation includes Life itself so the software and also the core library so if you go down here in packs you can always see the core library so even if you have no packs from Ableton or third-party packs installed that are self-installing, the core library will always be included in that. Then on top of that, you have the packs that you can install and the user library, and those reside elsewhere. So if I go to library in the preferences, what you can see is here the content locations, so the location of the user library and the installation folder for packs. So there are defaults for this, so they're definitely likely going to be different for you. So for example, here this is installed on an external SSD drive because I have a lot of packs and not that much disk space on my internal SSD. So I have a specific folder on an SSD. So you can always just click on that and select a new path if you don't like the one that is the default setting. And if you forgot where you actually got those installed, you could always come back to the life preferences and under library check where they actually reside. You can see the life factory packs are installed separately from the core library and you can find both still under packs. And then the user library, which you can find under places as well, I'm going to close this again, resides in a specific own location as well. There might be cases like with the installation, if you want to change the installation path from Life 11 to Life 12 for the factory packs, where as was the case for me and a lot of people, not everyone from what I've heard, that basically you could set a new path, but if you installed a new pack or updated a new pack, it would still be happening in the previous location. And for this, you have a file called library CFG. I'm going to link an article. And there's also a preferences.cfg file. I'm going to link another article. If you need to reset life, this is important, but it will also reset all of the settings here in the life preferences to the default. If you're not sure what settings you had and you need to get rid of the preferences to reset life or the preferences CFG file better, then it's best to kind of write down all these settings or make screenshots, which I think is always the easiest way these days, so that afterwards you can set them all quickly up again. So to recap, you got the live program with the core library, you got the live library and the user library. And of course, there's also other files that are installed like in, in the preferences, which are different between Windows and Mac where they reside. But most of the time you don't need to know this. You only need to know this if you want to reset the preferences dot cfg or the library dot cfg files. It's always possible to have two live versions, whether they're upgrades or updates installed on the same computer alongside each other. So that is no problem. The only problem that can arise is if you basically still use both and you're updating any factory packs or you're making changes to the user library, like for example, you're saving new default presets or something like this then if you're doing this in the newer version, in the older version, those files will not work. Okay, so now what if you want to upgrade Ableton Live or let's say you need to downgrade or technically downdate, but that's not a word because it turns out you're having issues with the latest update and let's say Ableton Live is crashing. So the first thing when you update or upgrade 
is always the check compatibility. So that means you basically have to know the minimum system requirements. I'm going to link this below as well. If you upgrade, the settings in the life preferences are automatically copied. So when you update or upgrade as well. Then you also might want to check if you can find the information if plugins or Max for Life devices you're using, especially Max for Life devices from third party developers. But that has also been the case in the past with Max for Life devices from Ableton. So in Ableton Life Packs, they could get for free, especially. Those things are one of the reasons why I like to keep the older version installed when I upgrade. So where can you find live versions if you want to upgrade? So if you want to upgrade, you simply log into your account on the Ableton website, and then you just have to make sure that you have the latest version selected here to be able to download it. And then you just have to choose the correct download. So whether you have Mac or Windows, and then just download it. Not quite as easy to find is where you can find live versions if you want to downgrade. So either to the previous version before you made an update or even to a previous version, like say from Live 12 to Live 11. Just a note for that, if you, let's say, bought a license for Live 12 and you realize that it's actually not running on your computer because it's an older model, you cannot just simply download and install Live 11 and authorize it as well. So you will need a license for that. If you happen to be in this situation, then what you would need to do is get in touch with Ableton support and explain things quite often you should be able to get the Life 11 license so that you can still run Ableton Life on your older computer. So downgrading. So if you need to downgrade, then here if you just scroll down, then what you can see is that it says you can download previous Life versions from the download archive and click on that. I'm going to provide links for everything including this one. So here you can see by now we can even download things that are related to push. And then here you can see, you can even like if you have a suite, you can download the standard installer as well. If you need to check anything, like when you're working with a friend to see like what opens and what doesn't, for example, that might be something where you might be interested in trying this out. And then here you can also see like earlier versions, Life 11, and it actually goes down all the way to Life 1 or Life 1.5, that is, although you will likely not be able to run it on your computer because it's too new. So if you've been working on a live set or live project with an older version and you want to continue working on it, and so you've been making changes and you want to save it, then Ableton Life will ask you to save it as a new file, which is really helpful because there is no backwards compatibility. This is not just a case from say Life 11 to Life 12, but that's also been the case from say Life 11.2 to 11.3. So I'm just gonna go in this and then I can just save it as say L12 so I know that this is just saved because live 12 and I could just click save. I'm not going to do this because it's not important for this. So what if you need to upgrade your OS or you just want to upgrade your OS, so your operating system, so let's say from Big Sur to Ventura or whatever, what is always recommended to at least wait half a year to make sure everything is compatible. So things that you need to consider that need to be compatible. Is life compatible for the new OS? I'm going to include a link where you can check this this is the this is system requirements. Are all your plugins compatible with the new operating system? What about your drivers for your audio interface or also if you have a MIDI interface, are they compatible? Do you need other drivers for anything else or say third party control surfaces, will they be compatible? Then 
Also, the same goes for Max for Life devices. So, for example, there's been a, an issue with a lot of Max for Life devices switching from macOS Intel to Apple Silicon. And then, if you are using any other apps that you use as peripherals or a connection to kind of, you know, say converting OSC data to MIDI data or, you know, whatever. There's there's loads of possibilities of um, software that you might use in conjunction with Ableton Life as well, whether that's for sorting samples, connecting things to the internet, whatever. So there's there's a lot of things to consider that need to be compatible with your new operating system that you want to upgrade to. If you've confirmed that all of these things are compatible with the new operating system, then the first step to do is back up everything and then upgrade so that just in case things do not work as expected and you're having issues, you can easily downgrade again. Okay, that's it from me for today. I hope you found this useful. If you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please pop them in the comments and I hope for you see you next time. Until then, bye.